On this episode of Exactly How, we're going to show you how to save thousands of dollars when you're purchasing investment properties and how to avoid some of the biggest landmines out there on this episode of Exactly How. You're listening to the Exactly How podcast, where you'll hear the underground, closely guarded wealth building secrets of successful people around the globe. Discover exactly how to improve your mental, physical, and financial health. Feel better, make more money, live, give, and prosper in today's exciting, fast paced world filled with opportunity for those who know exactly how. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Connected Investors podcast and YouTube show, Exactly How. During this episode, you'll discover exactly how to pick the right policy for your real estate investments. And this is going to save you so much money and really protect you in a very important way. So definitely make sure to take notes throughout this. For those of you who are new, my name is Ross Hamilton, today's host and CEO of ConnectedInvestors.com. Today, we have the privilege to learn from a man who has really disrupted the insurance industry for real estate investors and solved some big, big problems. Prior to his career in real estate, he worked as a cement finisher right? All of that changed after he had a heart attack and had to really examine his life and take it in a different direction. I would describe our guest as someone who is really passionate about helping others. Um, I'd like to introduce you to the one, the only Kish North. Kish, how are you? Great, Russ. How are you today? Oh, man, I'm doing really good. And uh, thanks for teaching us exactly how to pick the right policy for a real estate investment. Before we started the show, you were kind of blowing my mind on all of the, uh, gosh, ways I exposed myself and how much money I could have saved. You bet. Yeah. So actually, uh, Kish, Kish North. North, when, when I had a, uh, my first child, I was going to name him North. But then uh, Kanye West and, uh, and his wife, Kardashian, named their kid North. Yeah, like, they got uh, all kinds of directions going on their family. Yeah, yeah, they just need to pick one direction and, uh, and go with it. Plus, last name Hamilton, North Hamilton, sounds like a port in Massachusetts or something. So it just didn't, just didn't really work out. But all right, man, I'm, I'm glad you're here and I'm, I'm excited to learn from you. Your kids will appreciate it when they get older. Yeah, exactly. Um, well, before we dive into exactly how to pick the right insurance policy, Kish, you contribute a lot of your success to always paying it forward and never burning bridges. Why do you think that's played such a big role in your success? Yeah, great question, Ross. I've always believed that. I believe that what comes around goes around. And I believe that you, you don't burn bridges because in this space, in this industry, um, everyone helps everybody, especially the space I've been in, the, the hedge fund space for the past 10 years. Um, you know people for decades and people change within the space. They, they do hedge fund to insurance to appraisal business, stuff like that. So I feel that, uh, you know, treating people as you want to be treated is important in this business, in life. Yeah, no, it's, uh, you're right. This is, this is a small industry. If you're a real estate investor, just your local group of investors that are in your town, if you have a good uh, online presence, you're part of connected investors, you're part of groups, you're in the forum, treating those people really well and advancing others really is, uh, is what's really important as a real estate investor and just just as a human and uh, what you've done, seems like you help a lot of people uh, really move forward. So I'm excited to really dig into this. Now, if you're listening to this on the podcast, you need to go over to YouTube and search for Connected Investors and make sure to subscribe. This way you can actually watch the episodes as well. We do some things uh, that you can't quite uh, participate in if you're just listening to in the podcast. Plus in the description of the YouTube video, it's packed with all sorts of free gifts, links, some of the highlights from some of our past shows. So if you're watching this on YouTube, open up the description of this video, just scroll through that and choose something for free there. So I'm really excited for you. Now, um, if you're driving and you're listening to this, you don't have the opportunity to take notes, don't worry about that because you can go to exactlyhow.com and we're going to pull all of the notes, all of the highlights out of our guest's head and give you a blueprint that you can follow to implement everything that we're going to cover on this show and all of our past shows as well. That's where you can find all of our past shows, get all of our past blueprints. It's like 20 to 30 free courses there that you don't have to pay for. Just binge out on it. I get messages all the time, Kish. People are like, I've been up for days just watching your show. This is, this is fantastic. So it's better to binge here than watch, uh, I don't know, The Office or Frasier again for the 15th time. But, uh, and by visiting exactly how, I got to say this before we jump in, you can throw your name in the hat to win our $3,000 software called PIN. It's referred to as the pre-MLS because it shows you 
every potential investment property that's not listed on the MLS. So you don't have to go through the MLS markup machine. You can find those properties at deep discounts and you can save a lot of money insuring them once you learn what Kish is gonna show you on this, on this call here. So let's go ahead and dive right into it now that everyone knows to visit exactly how and check out the description of the YouTube uh, video here. Um, before we dive in, when you're talking, uh, we're gonna talk about some, some terms that people might not have heard of uh, before, because you've said some things I haven't heard of, and I've been in the business for you know decades. So I might slow you down, put the brakes on you, and say, "Hey, can you define that? Is that okay?" You bet. Mo moving forward. Okay, great. So we're gonna jump in, and we're gonna break this show up into uh, into three main chunks. I know we're gonna be talking a little bit about notes here, so that's one thing I want to kind of go ahead and just define before we get started. Uh, it in your in your view, what exactly is a note? Yeah, a note is defined in, in my mind in the business of a mortgage that has been originated by either a bank, a lender of some kind, and for insurance purposes, that note is either going to be one of three things. It's going to be either defaulted and someone's not paying on it, or it's going to be paying and someone's paying on it, or it could be in a position where it's not being paid and it's in foreclosure is some kind of process to foreclosure. That's what a yeah. note is. Great, and then you'll hear performing and non-performing notes. And performing is when someone's paying, non-performing is when someone is not paying. So when you hear us talking about notes, just know, just know that you're buying the mortgage in some state, one way or another. We have a whole episode on buying and selling notes at exactlyhow.com. So if you're interested in that, definitely go ahead and pick up, uh, pick up from there after this show's over. So. Before, the sh before we started, we talked about how to pick the right policy and we broke it down into three different aspects. One being how you own the property, right? Do you own the property? Do you own the note? We're gonna dive into that. The occupancy and then the location. So let's talk about the different ways to own a property. Sure, as we discussed, you could own a property by own owning the debt. So as a lender of Ross, you and I bought a mortgage from Acme Corporation, Chase Bank, Wells City, one of those guys, you would get a copy and they would assign the mortgage to you. You are now technically the lender. Mm -hmm. You're the bank. And you hope at that point in time, the borrower is either paying or going to pay. And they're also paying their insurance. Hence, that's where I come in. If they default on their mortgage, they'll probably default it on their insurance. Now, if you bought a mortgage and you, the debt is $100,000 and the house is a $200,000 house, you definitely want to have some kind of coverage in case there's some disaster that happens with the home, theft, fire, flood, vandalism, something like that. Gotcha. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, so what, are, what are some of the other ways? Uh, the other way is you could buy a performing note and it's sitting there and you're, you're catching a return on your investment and the borrower is paying the mortgage and they're paying their policy. At times when they're struggling, they, they, they probably default on their policy. So you have that option. The other way is that if it's a defaulted mortgage and you foreclose, it now becomes real estate owned. You definitely want to have some kind of blanket coverage or policy on that as well. And that policy can have what is called a builder's risk policy behind it because now Ross has bought that asset as a, de a defaulted note it rolled into an REO or real estate owned, and now you're going to rehab it and fix it. In the interim, you'll want to have coverage in case there's a mishap or disaster or something, and you're going to have coverage on that until you exit that property and or rent it or something like that. Gotcha. So, uh, Kish, if someone is buying a bank-owned property, right? They're not buying the note. They're buying a bank-owned property. All of this applies as well, or is this just yeah. for notes? Gotcha. So, so if you're buying a bank owned property, there's a vacant, typically a bank will sell it vacant. Yeah. Uh, sometimes they do sell with a tenant in it, but if it's, if it's bank owned real estate and there's a, a, a person in it, ergo the, the borrower tenant and the bank didn't want to evict them, you get it. You should immediately make sure that you've got some kind of coverage on it upon transfer. Perfect. And we'll go ahead and talk about vacant versus non-vacant and some of the, uh, the crazy uh, guidelines that are there. So actually, this is just kind of a real life example. There's a house down the street from me. Um, 
that for whatever reason it's vacant, it keeps, it keeps getting robbed, right? Is it the type of stuff that you're talking about, is it uh, theft as well, or is it just for, you know, something happens to the structure? No, you can get insurance policy that covers vandalism, flood, wind, hail, earthquake, all that's available. Yeah. I remember when the price of uh, copper started going up, a lot of my rental properties, people were going there and they were like ripping apart wires and uh, AC units to recycle metal. And it, it cost a lot of money to get that stuff, uh, get that stuff back. They were walking away with 50 bucks and now I have a $8,000 bill, you know, to get people back in there. So I'll give you another example, Ross. I have a client right now in Florida that, that buys a lot and we quoted him out and getting his policies going and he's got some claims and his is from tenants that they have to evict that upon eviction and kicking out, they pour concrete down the toilet and they have damage that way. That's a claim as well. So mm -hmm. tenants sometimes are not nice about having to leave a house they haven't paid a mortgage on in you know, a year, two years, five years, 10 years. Yeah, yeah, exactly. No, that's, that, that's really valuable insight. And guys, this stuff does happen. It doesn't always happen. I'm not trying to scare any newbies out. It took a lot, a lot of properties before this happened. But if, if, if you skip this step, if you say, oh, yeah, 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 I'm just going to go with, I have an insurance agent. I already know this stuff. Just really slow down and uh, bookmark this. Come back to this when you're ready because this could be the difference. And it will save you money one way or another. Um, one thing I want to say, I forgot to mention earlier, in the description of the YouTube video here, I'm giving away my book right here, The Insider's Guide to Funding Real Estate Investments. This is a full book, A to Z, every checklist, everything you need. This is not a self-published book. I actually got paid a lot of money to write this book because we facilitate billions of dollars in private funding here. So this publisher thought I was the best person on the planet to write this book. And I'm gonna give it away for free. It's in the description of the YouTube uh, video. Go ahead and click on that, download this book, get some funding so you can buy that investment property. Okay. Hey, so, Ross, can I, Ross, can I say something? You, you hit on a key word about newbies. And uh, to me, I've always classified myself as a newbie because I'm always learning in the business, mm -hmm. right? Uh, I, I never, the moment I stop learning, I'm in the wrong business. So, and I like helping the new person. And I think if they realize that if a new person has $100,000 to invest, let's use that number. Let's use the number. They buy three or four notes or, or REOs and they don't insure. One claim can wipe out your investment. Just one. One house that someone goes in and a fire breaks out or they, they ruin everything inside. That could cost you seven, eight, ten, twelve thousand dollars $12,000. Well, there goes your returns. When it costs them pennies, it costs them two or $300 a year to insure that property. Yeah. It's well worth the investment. No, I'm going to uh, uh, just, just give you a personal story of something that almost happened to me. So my early days of wholesaling and flipping, uh, maybe I was on my second or third deal. I got a home run deal, right? It was, uh, I was going to make 50, 60,000 on it really easy. I was in my early twenties. So that was like millions of dollars, right? Uh, I bought this property, had a tenant in it, right? Uh, I took it over um, subject to the mortgage. So kind of a weird deal here. Maybe we can talk about, talk about that. Um, and then the tenant acted all nice. Oh yeah, I'm going to leave. I'm going to leave. Wouldn't leave, right? So because he, was, he kept saying he was going to leave, I started to rehab the house. I started to fix the outside. Do the, I started getting the ball rolling on it. Then it came time for us to get inside. He wouldn't get out. Anyway, tried everything. At the end of the day, I had a hard money loan on it right? So I was like, well, I can't get this guy out. Uh, we brought him to court. He faked a seizure in the courtroom. Wow. He was not going to leave. So I sold, I sold the property to an investor that's like, I'll, I'll get him out. He actually happened to own an insurance company as well. He bought it cash, forgot to insure it, right? A lot of times when you're doing cash deals or subject to deals or creative deals, you don't have to have the insurance to close the deal. Because right. Right? you're not getting a loan. Now, if you borrow hard and private money, you have to have the insurance. So, uh, you know, had this story, had what, what happened was when the guy finally had to go, he burnt the house down. Oh, my God. And then the fire marshals called me up and uh, we tried to, you know, anyway. So that stuff does happen when you're kicking someone out of the house. He might pour concrete down, might uh, try to burn the house down. And the gentleman, you know, he didn't have insurance on it. So when you're out there doing creative deals, don't forget about the insurance. It's really, really important. So anyway, just some, just some more real life stuff there. Uh, well, great. We talked about the, are there any other types of ownership that you want to, to touch on? Um, 
Yeah, one that's big right now in the marketplace is called Contract for Deeds Owner Financing Product. Uh, that's very, uh, it's difficult, but it's not. It's really just a, a client like you, someone like you, Ross, that owns properties and you're the lender. You're lending to someone else. So it's almost a rent to own scenario. Uh, they're notorious for not paying their insurance. Um, it's really a, a different line there. So for contract yeah, deeds, uh, they're notorious. The, the tenant slash borrower is notorious to paying their monthly payment and not their insurance. And even sometimes not the, their utilities, but that's a whole other subject. But uh, that's the other kind of lending that's out there is, is private lending, you know? Yeah, no, absolutely. So this is, this is really important. And you know what we're going to do for, uh, for a gift for this show? I talked to Kish ahead of time at exactlyhow.com. When you check out this episode, I'm going to make sure you have all of his contact info there. And he's actually offered to talk to you and consult with you on how to get this stuff set up. So if your head is just like spinning right now, you can actually go right to the source. And also, in, if you're watching YouTube, that's why I keep pushing the podcast people to YouTube, you can actually comment. That goes right to my phone, and we'll make sure that Kish keeps his eyes on it when this thing first rolls out. So you can ask some questions right there. Uh, give us a thumbs up if you uh, like what we're talking about. If you've learned something, it's really important to engage with us so we know that we're, uh, we're on the right track. So thank you so much for offering to do that for our members. You bet. Yeah, that's that's. Huge value right there. I'm actually going to be reaching in. I'm going to keep this conversation going afterwards to talk to you about some things I have going on. Um, now let's go ahead and talk about number two, the occupancy. So vacant versus not vacant. At Connected Investors, the software that we give away shows every vacant property out there. So you can say, show me a vacant house that was inherited that has 50% property, 50% uh, equity. And then our members reach out to those individuals because we give them all free skip traces. And our members are buying tons of vacant properties. So uh, let's, let's talk about this. It's really important to the members that use our software that we're going to give away here in just a few moments. Sure. And, and this could, you could be an hour on, the, uh, on this podcast talking about occupancy and vacancy stuff, but I'll try to keep it brief is from an underwriting standpoint, it's important to know what the occupancy is, right? Because the uh, assets that are vacant have a higher tendency for vandalism. Mm -hmm. We all know that that's an obvious case, right? So we'll want to know, and you'll want to protect as an investor to make sure a, when you buy a property, a couple things the underwriter asks for in the application is one, if it's vacant, is it visited monthly, right? Does your servicer, which when people buy notes goes to a CFEB controlled servicing platform that's licensed for debt collecting, right? So what happens is you need to make sure it gets looked at on a monthly basis. It's typically a service they do. That's gonna help the insurance company know that's being monitored. They're gonna ask a question, is it winterized? That's a whole nother subject. And, and your, your, your people that watch this podcast might go, well, how does Kish know this stuff? Well, I just spent the last 20 years in the hedge fund world. So I sat in the same seats your, your, your people do. I bought and sold assets. I worked for some large trading companies. I, I had my own assets. I still own 70 of my own assets. So I understand what the needs are. So when I talk to the, your clients and your students, um, you're talking to someone that's not only an insurance agent, but I've lived the dream or the nightmare of what it takes to keep these protected. So the vacancy issue is important. When it becomes vacant, make sure you take photographs of the inside of the home. Because if and when you file a claim, you hopefully can document that it looked like this way today and today it works this way tomorrow. Golden and nugget, I, I'm just, I'm just gonna stop you there real quick. I just wanna reiterate this. When the house is vacant, Get in there, take pictures, do a little video walkthrough, right? Right when it becomes, that's, that's really important. Thank you for that tip. Yeah, inspections are important. And typically a good servicer does that. They do a property inspection and it's loaded up and you see it and has all the photos. So when you file a claim with us, we have a great platform and a website. You, you load up the photos in there and say, hey, here's the pictures of before, here's the pictures after, file a claim. And we hope there's no claims. Yeah. That's the goal here. We hope there's uh, no claims. Yeah, let me just ask you this question. What if your house becomes vacant? You have a rental property, someone moves out, you think you're gonna get it rented shortly, doesn't kind of come through. Talk me through some of the dangers of that. Well, you've got a couple issues with that. One is, um, and I'll try to stay on track with insurance, but when I have Joe Downs in my house and I believe he's paying and all of a sudden he vacates the property, A, sometimes you don't even know it. Mm -hmm. The servicer's on a, 30 or 60 day review, sometimes you don't know for 30 or 60 days. 
especially if you're buying assets outside your community, right? So I would buy assets nationwide. So I wasn't in my backyard, mm -hmm. right, Ross? So some of your clients have in the backyard, great for you. Some people don't, they're not in the backyard. So you might not know. So it's important to make sure every 30 days you're doing that. Um, if you're small, you're able to do it. If you get bigger, you hopefully have a, a background office that can kind of do this. You want to make sure you track utilities too. I know that's off course, but you're, you're, you're new, newbies and these people, you have to track utilities because the borrower vacates the property. The utilities follow the house. They do not follow the client. So they'll start racking up and you'll be billed for that. So the moment you find out it's vacant, you got to go winterize it if it's close to winter. Otherwise, and we all have stories, I've had clients not winterize it and the bad tenant walked out, turned the water on and my house flooded. So you've got huge damage. Yeah. So, well, occupancy. So you want to make sure you secure it, put the utilities in your name. I always like to have power on in my house so it looks somewhat occupied. Mm -hmm. I make sure the lawns are maintained properly. I make sure the bushes are done. So it beautifies the community. I don't get violations from the city. I know this is a little off track, but you asked me no, a question. Is, yeah, this, for your yeah, group to know. This, is, this is important. I want the house to look somewhat occupied, yeah. not vacant. And if you listen to some of our, uh, some of our past podcasts, you know, just maintaining the landscaping helps with theft. If people are sure. driving down a neighborhood and they see a house that looks run down and looks like no one's there, they're going to peek in the windows. Could be kids. I've been that kid. Maybe, maybe not. Won't publicly say it. But, you know, it's just you're attracting, you're setting yourself up for failure by not, uh, by not managing those, those, those assets uh, correctly. So that's, that's some, really some communities, Ross, in New York, um, Miami, certain uh, communities where um, servicers go in and put specific um, doors on the access, the in, in and out access where you can't get in. Uh, so they put special metal doors because the, the crime is pretty high, right? People will go in and not only steal copper, especially when you have homes that are pre-100 years old, they'll go in and steal the hardwood, the doors, the ornamental wood carvings. All those things go. I've been to Chicago. I've been to St. Louis where people just steal that stuff. So yeah. um, unfortunately, you want to maintain it like it's occupied, but there are some communities where you need to secure it. The community will know it's vacant, but if you do it right – it'll deter the miscreant from stealing from you. Yeah, there you go. Well, hey, thanks thanks for that. And I appreciate the, uh, the extra insight that you gave there. So now what we're going to do is announce the winner of the PIN software. Again, this is the software that finds you any type of property that you're looking for, from vacants to pre-foreclosures to probates to bank-owned uh, bank properties, shadow inventory, and more, apartment complexes. Uh, with motivated sellers. I mean, this, this is the one tool that every real estate investor needs in some way. And this person, they visited exactlyhow.com. They commented on our, uh, on our YouTube videos and they threw their name into the hat. And the winner today is... Looking for a private money partner to fund your flips or rentals? Go direct to the source. PrivateLenders.com, a free marketplace that instantly matches you with up to five private money lenders to save thousands by having non-bank lenders compete to be your funding partner. PrivateLenders.com. And the winner today is Chris Chrisom. Congratulations. We're going to go ahead and get you all set up with the software. Um, someone from our team will be uh, reaching out to you shortly. Make sure you know how to use it. And uh, congratulations. This could be exactly what you need to change your, uh, the financial trajectory of your life. Just make sure to use the software. Sometimes when we give it away for free, people are like, oh, cool. Then they don't use it. And they pay three grand. They use it every day. And they make their money back and then they just keep making money, 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 retired, right? So congratulations. If you didn't win, don't worry. Um, if you visit exactlyhow.com, throw your name into the hat. Uh, from time to time, we do something special for those of you who uh, entered the contest. All right. So let's talk about number three here, which is the location. Talk me through, um, you know, the location element. It doesn't matter where it's located, cover your house. All right, that's that section. Thank you. <laughs> but, uh, you know, location is really, that's it. Wherever it's located, insure the property. I have some clients that kind of uh, insure differently. Some people want to self-insure, and I get it, um, which, which they want to self-insure their lower-end assets. That creates, that is good and bad in some ways, in our opinion, as, as uh, insurance guys. And that is, if you've got a high concentration of homes in 
Texas, Louisiana, yeah. Florida coast, and you want to self-insure, and all of a sudden a, a beautiful hurricane comes in, you could lose a lot of money. Everything, yeah. Everything. So even if you've got 50 and, and five get ruined, that could be a $100,000 claim. So I encourage people, if they self-insure, to kind of look at all options in that. Um, usually when we insure and, and quote people, um, there is a difference between homes that are in flood zones and not flood zones. Um, but besides that, it's pretty generic across the board. Um, so that's something we look at when we underwrite. Great, great. Um, I want to say, Ross, I want to see something. We'll insure one house to 10,000 homes. So yeah. it doesn't matter if you're a newbie or a veteran. We'll insure and talk to everyone and, and look at your portfolio and see the best strategy for you. Perfect, perfect. Well, again, whether you have one or you're uh, one of the huge hedge funds that uses connected investors to find properties, um, visit exactlyhow.com and get in contact uh, with our guest here. He'll take you through the uh, take you through all the different scenarios, help you save a lot of money, and most importantly, uh, protect you. So, I'm um, I'm really uh, I'm really digging this. Now, let me ask you a really important question: What do you think your life would be like if you never had that heart attack and didn't decide to kind of change the direction of your life? Well, my wife wouldn't be too happy. <laughs> um, but you know what? I, I think there's a higher power above that kind of directs your life sometimes. And I think um, you, if we as people can make the best of the opportunity that's presented to us, it's all good. And, and the, the, what happened to me happened to me. Um, and it's now what I make of it that counts, right? What I'm going to do with my life the opportunity. You know, when this happened, my heart attack last year, it was, uh, it was shocking to all of us, right? I wasn't aware it was going to happen, obviously. Um, but it made me sit back and reflect on my life, where I'm at, what I need to do. And, you know, I, I could have gone and done and worked for another hedge fund. Mm -hmm. I don't think that was the answer. What I, what I did was I went back to my, you know, two or 3,000 followers on LinkedIn and thought, what could I bring as a value add to the same people I've worked with for the past 10 years? Yeah. And that's what I did, Ross. Yeah. I thought, you know what? When I was a hedge fund runner, when I managed my own, what are the two largest expenses I had? Taxes and insurance. There you They're go. the two largest funds. I can't help my clients with taxes, yeah. but I can help them with the insurance piece. Well, I, I yeah, I have something here that might help you from getting a, a future heart attack. Here we go. This is our shop. This is our shop dog. Oh my gosh! <laughs> we uh, nick nicknamed Flippy. Flippy, nice. There we go. Uh, in future episodes, I will not be able to hold him up. He's already thirty-six pounds, oh and gosh. they project what a hundred and some pounds. Over 120 pounds, this dog will, will grow here. So if you're watching this on YouTube, you can see the Connected Investors office here in Wilmington, North Carolina, and our dog, and our dog Flippy, dog friendly. So anyway, an emotional support dog. Oh, look at that big yawn. All right. <laughs> Thanks for bringing the pup over there. All right. We have, we have fun here for sure. Um, no, at, you know, in, in all seriousness, though, the, the challenge, the obstacle always becomes the way. Right. So if you're, if you're listening to this, what are some things that you're really struggling with in your life? And it's, it's really cool because when you start looking at those, not as, not as a, a bad thing, but this is what I'm supposed to fix it. There, it's actually your challenges are the direction your life is supposed to take. These challenges come to you. And once you, you can't, you can't ignore them or you're going to stay where you are. But once you get through them, that's the direction you're supposed to go. So look for challenges Look for things that seem bad. Look for friction and solve that. That's the only way that you're going to become the person that you're, you're meant to be because you get tested in all sorts of different ways. And maybe you just want to kind of stay here and that, that, that's your thing. But to progress, you have to look for challenges and you have to go ahead and push through them because with every, with every challenge comes a new vantage point, right? You, you got to completely relook at your life and say, whoa, 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 you know, hold on here. You have a new perspective on, uh, on things. So we're all facing uh, challenges. It doesn't matter if you're, you know, have five bucks in the bank, you're a multimillionaire, you're a hedge fund billionaire, right? There's, you know, there's always challenges there. And the only thing that will really make you feel better is when you look at those challenges as the best thing that ever happened to you. When something like comes to me that's negative, I'll be like, how can I make this the best thing that ever happened to me? And just asking myself that question shifts the way I look at it. And now I can kind of, you know, I can kind of progress. So anyway, just some, uh, some philosophy for you there. Actually, it's a stoic principle. 
if any of you guys study uh, Stoicism. Um, well, great. We're going to go ahead and jump into the rapid fire section of this, po of this podcast and YouTube show. You excited? Always. All right. So on a scale of one to 10, how strict are your parents? Oh, 10. You get up early or stay up late? Oh, I get up early. How many hours of sleep do you get? Seven. Favorite or most recent book that you read? Bible. If you could be any superhero, who would it be? Iron Man. There you go. Uh, what is something everyone should do less of? Complain. What is something everyone should do more of? Pay it forward. Bitcoin, bang or bust? Bang. Bang. Uh, will people live, will people visit Mars in your lifetime? No. No? All right. Because they already have, right? <laughs> That's right. Well, we go. don't know. It didn't come back, right? We don't yeah, know. Exactly. Hey, thank you so much for spending time with us today. Thank you, Ross. Appreciate you. Yeah. And for everyone who is with us, you made it to the end of the show, which means you found some great value here. So please go ahead and give us a like, a thumbs up, uh, whatever it you're supposed to do on the platform that you're watching this, please engage with us in some way is what I'm asking for. Because when you engage, this video starts to show up to more people. This way they're not watching crap, they're watching real powerful information. Plus, that's, uh, that's, that's what we use to fuel us. So comment, let us know what you liked, engage with us. Make sure if you're on YouTube, now is a perfect time to check out the description to go ahead and get the book here and all the other free stuff that we have and make sure to visit exactlyhow.com. Most people don't finish what they start but you finished this podcast. Congratulations. I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye. The Connected Investors app connects you with investors, notifies you of available properties, helps locate cash buyers, and secure private funding to close deals. Set up in seconds to become a member of the Connected Investors social network. Now you can scroll through your main feed to find cash buyers, see investment properties not available to the general public, and network with investors by adding your own comments to a thread to keep the conversation going. The Control Center is your connection to add properties to sell, start new discussions, connect with local investors, and even find private funding. The Notifications tab will keep you alerted to new investment properties and offers. You'll also find new friend requests to connect directly with the community to build your network. From the Property Marketplace, you'll be able to find favorite, and make offers on investment properties. Download Connected Investors today to find, figure, fund, and flip investment properties on the go.